Hey, I'm Jamie Philbrook with IamRogue.com. We're here in San Diego, Comic-Con International 2013, and I'm standing here with David Guy Levy, uh, the writer of a new digital comic book called Back to Back to the Future. Uh, David, let me begin by asking you, how did you kind of come up with the concept? It's a really cool concept. How did you come up with it for the book? You know, I'm a Back to the Future fan, uh, and since I was a kid, I used to, you know, search the world for hoverboards, and, and uh, I was in, in film school, and I was reading an article on a website that was talking about how Eric, when Eric Stoltz was fired, uh, the process of all that and getting Michael J. Fox in there. And uh, as a fan, I'd never heard this new piece of information that Bob Gale, the writer and producer of the movies, had was, was saying, which was there was also a girl who was fired because she was too tall for Michael J. Fox. She was playing the girlfriend, uh, and then she was just too tall for Michael J. Fox. And she never made it to set, and, and Bob went on to say that it was his biggest regret and if he could in life, and if he could change it, he, he would. And I thought it was amazing that the man who invented my favorite time travel movie of all time had a major regret he'd like to change and it just came to me that quickly like lightning I was like what if he could change it with the own device he created in his mind so he uses his we use the same structures the back to the future movies and he goes back in time with Melora accidentally in a Tesla and it's 1984 and uh, they realize Eric Stoltz is still Marty McFly and there's a chance here and uh, they make sure he's not replaced and that she has the career that she didn't get out of it. And then uh, they go to the future and he's an evil Biff Tannen type and they've got to you know, fix it all up and then they go back again and there's a bunch of farce going on and, and uh, clean up their mess, you know? And uh, so I started writing it just because it was a story I liked and I was in film school and I had a thesis due the next morning and I had nothing to turn in. So I turned in this idea and they said, well, this is what you're writing for six months. I was like, great, I love this idea and I'll just write it and then I'll put it in a drawer because, you know, I'm, 20 years old and I'm never going to make this as a blockbuster movie. And I put it in a drawer and then uh, eight years later I took it out and I showed it to some people at a reading group. And uh, I had just worked on a comic book at the time and I, I'd been through the process. And the combination of do doing that and them saying, like, you really should not put this back in a drawer, I was like, well, I'll just make it a graphic novel. And uh, we got an artist and it took three and a half years to draw because it's like cinematic quality cover art the whole way through. Have you spoken <laughs> to Bob Gale? How does he feel about being a character in this? Haven't spoken to, well, I never approached any of them because I just felt after a while, there's like a, a, a window of just when it got creepy. <laughs> you know, like if you're working on something for 10 years about people who don't even know you're working on it, the uh, last thing I want to do is call them up and say, hey. <laughs> so I just said, you know, if they'll come across it and they like it, that'd be awesome. If they don't, you know, uh, that's sad, but, you know. But since it's come out, some of the people in the book have come across it and tweeted about it or, or contacted me on Facebook like Malora Hardin who's the star of the book with Bob loves it and has been tweeting about it and and I'd love to hear from Bob but I'm sure you know I'd have to ask and I feel creepy doing that and I haven't heard from Eric Stoltz or anything but I'm sure you know one day I might hear something through a grapevine. <laughs> So, and the book really follows sort of Melora's story as opposed to Eric's, but yeah, he's Bob a and Melora are together. Okay. So, so Melora's sort of the, the McFly of the movie and, uh, and Bob Gale turns into sort of Doc Brown. And then uh, Eric Stoltz sort of starts out as George McFly and he turns into Evil Biff. And uh, right now it's available as a digital comic book, right? Yeah, and it's all going to charity. So if you go to givingbacktothefuture.com or give back to the future or back to back to the future, it'll all take you there, givingbacktothefuture.com. And the first three issues are free. So download them, read them, share them. And then if you like it and you want to support this cause, the Young Storytellers Foundation, each, other, each of the last three books are $2 each. And it all goes to this charity which mentors kids and under... Uh, served public school systems, uh, arts park communities, and these kids write original plays, and then they uh, bring in professional actors from stage and screen to, to act them out in front of their entire school, and it's the most magical thing. It's oh, that, that's a great cause. Yeah. Well, and has there been any uh, thoughts or talk about uh, releasing it as a graphic novel or releasing all the issues in, in, in hardback? Well, there was no plan, and then uh, it's, it's in the last two weeks when it's sort of been rolling out slowly, there's been a lot of people asking for print, and so, you know, uh, if you're a Back to the Future fan, you know that 2015 is right around the corner. And uh, I think it would be a missed opportunity if I didn't put it out in 2015. So the plan is, you know, the anniversary of, of Back to the Future, but also, you know, the year that they traveled in time. Uh, I think you even get the release date as close to the date on the time on the on the clock and uh, put it out in print. And uh, so but if you want to read it now, you got to read it digitally and then we'll have an official book in 2015.